There's no point in talking about Linux if I can't edit my videos and record in Linux. I would say the Windows counterpart would be Sony Vegas Pro, and that's saying a lot. Kaden Live. Hi, 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 hi. George Bush doesn't care about black people. If you wanted to have what you might call a face-to-face -face encounter with an alternate version of yourself within a parallel reality, you might have to travel from your universe through some sort of quantum singularity of some sort, traversing the multiverse into the alternate physical reality as you define it through some sort of method that might look like this. What if you could travel? Let's go! Although it's more likely that you're probably not really wanting to do that, and what you're really wanting to do is, well, you're kind of sitting there thinking and wishing and knowing, man, you know, in some parallel reality, in some parallel universe of some sort, there's some alternate version of me that is having much better experiences than I am, that is doing the things that I wish that I could do in my current reality, in my current universe, that I just can't seem to make happen. You know, it would be really nice if I could just somehow shift in and become them. Well, that's based on the old classical mechanical view of the of the universe versus the multiverse. Seeing as 21st century quantum physics has discovered that space and time are pretty much the same thing. There are two aspects of one thing that I think Doctor Who said it best. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. What you're probably not realizing is that physical reality is a holographic illusion because atoms are made of pure energy, everything is made of pure energy, light is made of pure energy, and there is really only one moment in all of creation. There is the now moment. The illusions of past, present, and future are created by looking at that one now moment, observing that now moment from a different perspective. So that kind of changes the whole ball game. That means that the only universe there is is that you are a universe unto yourself. And when you look out at everything and you're seeing what you perceive as the universe, you're looking at all the stars and the planets and the people around you and just, you know, all the vastness of everything and going, wow, that's the universe. No? 
it's actually the multiverse. When you look out through your telescope into the vastness of space, you are not looking at the universe, you are looking at the multiverse, and your observation is only seeing one probable reality. That's all it is seeing. It's not, it's, it's seeing based on what you assume reality is, is and should be. Um, because, you know, if you looked out there from an entirely different perspective, an entirely different paradigm, would your view of what you are seeing in the universe be different? You're damn right it would be different. So that means through every choice, every moment, moment to moment to moment, we are actually shifting in and out of parallel timelines, all the infinite parallel Earths and everything else. We don't need the wormhole to do what those guys on the movie Sliders are, you know, are actually doing. Um, we do that constantly, and it's based on our vibratory rate. Think of it like computers. Um, you can't install a Windows program on a Mac. Well, at least not unless you upgrade that Mac to Linux and then you install the Wine-based Play on Linux and then there's a lot of Windows programs you can run, but that, that's still needing to take some sort of external implementation that normally isn't there to kind of jam it in there and sort of get it to work. Well, in the same way, you cannot experience in your reality what isn't vibrationally compatible to you. And by vibrationally compatible, or shall we say vibratory rate, I mean that as a vibration of your energy, seeing as you are a being made up of atoms, which are made up of energy, and everything is energy, existing in a singular now moment, being looked at from different perspectives. So that means, based on who you are, who you decide you are, at any given moment, you are shifting into parallel versions of yourself. You see all those alternate selves? They're not, they're not, well, they're kind of me and kind of not. They're all you. As a matter of fact, it's this aspect that makes scientists really, really pissed off when they're trying to do experiments, because apparently the observer does have an effect on the experiment because atoms simultaneously act both like a particle and a wave. So scientists tend to remove themselves from their experiments most of the time and just occasionally peek in to try to get the results without any observer having an effect. And it just drives them absolutely bananas, which is also why Einstein really, really hated quantum physics. He was not an advocate of it. He absolutely, positively hated it. Um, <clears throat> Everything that consists of atoms, which is well, pretty much most everything, also has these types of atoms in it that they refer to as strange particles. And the reason they're so strange is because they keep dimensionally shifting. All of a sudden they're there, poof, they're not there. They just, they left. They went into some alternate reality, dimension, whatever. Nobody knows exactly where, why, or how, or when. And then, poof, they're back again. So you have always got aspects of your physical body blinking from this dimension, out of this dimension to God knows where, and then back into this dimension, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, without stopping. So you are fluctuating interdimensionally, whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, this has been scientifically proven. As far as your vibratory rate linking you to any sort of specific reality or parallel timeline or whatever you want to refer it as, well, quantum entanglement kind of plays a part in that. You can kind of relate it to electromagnetism, but um, Einstein called quantum entanglement spooky action at a distance because when they entangled, quantum entangled two particles together, no matter how far apart they distance these particles, I mean, it could be like, they could have taken them, you know, one on one side of the country and one side on the other. Um, whatever they did to one particle happened to the other, and it happened in real time. Now, real time is basically the speed of thought. It's a lot faster than light, and, you know, it just goes to show that the light barrier really isn't a barrier, but, um, you know, and nor is the sound barrier a barrier. I mean, we've exceeded it. But basically the point is that in order to go real time, you know, it's, you know, it's instantaneous, and even the speed of light isn't real time because you can assign a number to it, X amount 100,000 miles per second or whatever it is. So if your perception, if your, if your worldview paradigm literally affects what timeline you glue yourself into, then that is an incredibly profound discovery. I mean, 
what, how did all the ancient cultures, the Mayans, the Aztecs, and the Egyptians, and, and all these people, how different was their view of reality that they were able to see the world in such a way, to be able to figure out how to do things to such perfect precision that modern science can't even duplicate today? So, you think about that one. I read Dr. Quantum comics. Everybody thinks she doesn't get enough, but I know it's real. That's how I do my magic on the court. So, what they taught us in school isn't really the way it is. And that our senses are playing tricks on us. You just gotta wonder, what is this reality that we find ourselves in? Quantum physics says it's all just waves of information. Do I believe that? <laughs> I hope so! Yikes! How I do my magic on the court? Yeah, I always choose the Wonder Boy first. Well, Dr. Quantum says everybody's got it. Everybody's doing it. Doing it constantly. Each and every time you look. And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness. The infamous double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now, there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter. Like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought, maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits, and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one, and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. 
So, they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. And it was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The observer collapsed the wave function simply by observing. And here's the secret. It's not because the way you change will change others around you. It's because there are, and here it comes, pay attention, already existing an infinite number of parallel Earths, each of a different vibration representative of a different reality. And the vibration you change to will determine which Earth you experience that already contains the people that are already germane to that vibration. The people around you may seem to change, but that's an illusion of continuity, or they may not seem to change. The point is, is that eventually you will no longer interact with them, no longer experience them. You will wonder where they went. They may take themselves out in a variety of ways. They may do so by appearing to die. They may do so by simply disappearing from your life and you never really know what happened to them. But the point is, is that eventually you will recognize that what you've done by changing yourself is you've simply shifted your consciousness to a parallel reality where those vibrations no longer can exist. You haven't changed them. And if you're still interacting with versions of them, that's what you're interacting with. You're interacting not with a changed person, you're interacting with a version of that person that already existed in that reality, that's germane to that reality. All these parallel realities already exist. Changing your world is not actually changing your world. It's leaving one world for another. Shifting your frequency to a different program that's already running on your giant TV computer. That's what it is, and that's why it is said, if you want to change anything in your world, all you have to actually do is change yourself. You will take yourself to a world where that change can be reflected to you, because that change already exists naturally in that world. And thus, then, the idea of giving positive meaning to your experience will allow you to extract a positive effect and a positive experience for yourself. Remember, we said the only thing that's real is experience. That's it. Everything else in that sense is simply a symbol, a reflection of experience. The only thing that's real is experience. Physical reality is not real empirically unto itself. There is no out there. There is no out there. That's the illusion. It's all here. It's all now.